So yes, let's start. So tonight I'm very happy uh, and very proud to introduce you, Jan and uh, um, Del Wilde and Inki Winnick. Um, this lecture would be part of the uh, lectures which were organized in parallel to our course, Hardware Software at TU Wien, at Technical University in Vienna. And um, Jan and uh, Inge are Belgian-based architects, but they're very well known uh, internationally for their brave and innovative and experimental, and I would say even charming design. In their architecture, they, um, in their architecture, they experiment with different materials, with different typologies, with structures and with heritage. Uh, it's colors and uh, materials and finishes and their combinations. Um, it's very, it's often very unexpected, but absolutely adorable. It's logical and sometimes provocative. Um, so they offer very interesting vision um, of usage of non-civic materials, uh, appropriating all structures and generally suggesting um, suggesting um, not only aesthetics, but as well uh, approach to work with uh, existing structures using non-conventional materials and also operating with minimal budgets. And they will reveal in their practice new values of familiar things and um, the circumstances of current ecological um, let's say conditions. This type of approach becomes more and more important. So we indeed have to rethink many values in architecture and construction. And um, Jan and Inki develop a very inspiring alternative approach. Um, it's very exciting uh, to study their work and also very uh, interesting to understand their working methods. So without any further delay, I would like to Welcome, Inge and Jan, please start. Good evening, all of you. Good evening. Thank you, Artem, and thank you, thank you, Leonid. Thank you, Theo Vienna, uh, to invite us on this evening to give us once again platform to talk about our work. Uh, we like to share all the ideas that much. This comes because, of course, we are not only architects, but we are also teachers, and we understand nowadays and the nowadays time frame we all live in. Luckily, let's say, uh, I talked about it yesterday also with other colleagues, saying that in fact one could say that teaching and practicing seems to become more closer than ever before, as the debates which are really at stake today seems to take really part in studio and in practices today. Can I share the screen? Then I will go to the presentation. Yes, please, should work. Uh, you see now my screen? Yes. Okay. So um, I first uh, will introduce like three small projects and then I will give the word to Inge to talk about uh, uh, recent, more recent work, because uh, what I show you here right now is uh, earlier work, but with a certain value for us when it comes to the nowadays topics, challenges, approaches we believe we all need in architecture and in the world as such. And this is an artwork of an artist. Well, it's a simple artwork, as you can see. It are just some words. Mettre en jeu, op het spel zetten, means uh, putting things at risk, I do believe that this is uh, one of the elements that keeps on interesting and even more interest us, not just to play the risks, but we understand that in the urge of times of today, checking out things, really challenging them is uh, even more important than ever before. However, for us, this started uh, at a very earlier stage. I talk now about, I'm not sure, 1992, 1993, and these are four drawings of a small project, the refurbishment of a house. And I return back to the first drawings. What is it about? Uh, me and a friend, we were just off school, graduated and invited in another friend's house who inherited this house from its parents being quite a nice white villa in the better suburbs of Brussels with a very large, um, with a very large garden. And the young guy complained a little bit about the fact that um, to him, 
the villa was not spatial enough, not spacious enough, and he found it too small and this and that and that. And uh, me and my friend, we were quite astonished by that feeling, such a villa in such a almost park kind like of garden. Uh, and the thing that we, uh, when we, we, we hovered around in the villa, went home and started to think is that our opinion, that was not uh, a lack of uh, square meters, but it was rather, let's say, a feeling of too tight ceiling floor distance. By that we proposed to him, uh, we went back with these four drawings to him. These are made on checkered paper. We talk 1992, 1993. It's another era in which we all did still manual. And actually today here at the office, we still do all manual. But the proposal or the three draw or the four drawings do represent the idea of saying, well, why don't we take away floor between basement and ground floor? So we get a taller ground floor as we dig out the house out of the tall garden. I think we must have been half an hour inside the room. Uh, the guy was constantly laughing. Uh, and then we found our back uh, at the front door half to half an hour. And we looked to each other, of course, as young architects, you know, you lose the job, your first job. Uh, it was about 400,000 euros at that time. So quite a job eh, for young architects. And the first thing, the first job we had, we, lo we lost. But on the other hand, we were quite happy. We didn't complain. We understood that for us, this way of looking at things might be a way we would like to look to things back or further in the future. Here, I, I digged up some uh, photographs of a project, a competition regarding a, in fact, a competition on a landscape. Here you see a park and the competition is about the reorganization the redesigning of the landscape and the competition came on the occasion that on the other part of the landscape they were about we talk in 1994 i think it was uh, they were about to realize an elderly housing with service flats and service center and everything and these are uh, black white images of the model which is quite chaotic as you can see i come back on that later but to us this goes together uh, I, I stitched this saying from God Mata Clark today to what we did at that time. Here is what we have to offer you, confusion guided by a clear sense of purpose. That's, let's say, one of the, that's, there are many, but let's for today say the second idea we embrace. And you see here, this is the booklet uh, at that time, graphic design was totally different, one could say. The booklet that goes together with the Wedstrijd competition for a park, it was called Vevers. Les Etangs, the ponds. And you see all these kind of things at that moment already quite important. Solidarity in between generations. And here you see actually, and it's important to look in that in detail. If you if you remember still what I showed you on model, it on the model we represented it differently. This is the project as it was foreseen by the architect. So the design of the building is no part of the competition. And as you can see, you have this kind of typical service center middle with a possible extension in the future. And then you have the wings for the elderly and so on and so on and so on. So again, here on the left side, the build side and the object of the, the subject of the competition. And these are, let's say, the general layouts that were delivered in that competition. You see nicely done uh, around the old castle that was there and very beautiful aesthetics. And here you see our proposal. And first of all, what the, was our first aim into it is that um, we are not landscape designers. We were once again young, uh, ambitious, if not pretentious uh, architects. Uh, and we found that the layout or the position of that original building was not really the best. As you can see on our model, one has here the uh, highway passing by. But on the other hand, and much more important here is the old city fabric, 19th century uh, uh, housing living around the park. And the first thing we did is that in fact, we started to cut this piece of building into parts and we reshuffled and repositioned it into the park. So it's not exactly anymore the building. We had something like on one hand, we will not, let's say comment it too much by delivering another design. We just wanted to, to correct position and to correct the layout of the building. And then later on, we added this kind of park layout. You will not be surprised that the best prize we could win at that time is that we were disqualified. 
But to us, again, it was an attitude of looking to the things, an attitude that went then together with this kind of messy model expressing dynamism. But for example, look at this one here. Contrary to all the landscape designers introducing aesthetics, introducing uh, Renaissance, introducing Baroque or whatever, we wanted to make it like kind of like messy place because also when we went through the park, uh, till that moment, the park was mostly squatted by kids and youngsters hanging around doing stuff that, of course, they didn't like. And our proposal was just a little bit, let's say, to accelerate that idea by adding lost elements of the uh, highway around and by that. And the funny thing is that uh, Inga and I, we passed through the, through the park uh, one year ago by now. And we found out that the original winning project has never been executed. And in the team, meantime, the plan of the park got a new layout. And honestly, this new layout with a lot of, let's say, play background for kids, this new layout is quite similar to the proposal we did backwards in the 90s, 14, 94, 94, 1915. Uh, it, comes, it brings us to a third introduction or project uh, regarding attitude, one could say. It. This is the Dutch Architectural Institute, known as the NIE, Nederlands Architecture Institute, nowadays uh, named Het Nieuwe Institute. And this is the building of the architect Jo Koenen, uh, quite known in the lower countries. And this building situates it on the other side of the so-called museum park in Rotterdam. On the other side of the museum park, one has the Kunsthal of OMA Rem Koolhaas. And the two buildings opened at the same time. Also OMA made the design for this plot, but Jo Koenen won it. And it was like a strange time when you went to the opening, because of course, on one hand, one had Kunsthal of Rem Koolhaas, which was, and to me still today, a groundbreaking project. And then you had this aesthetics of the time frame of Jo Koenen. I have to say today, maybe I appreciate that building a little more than at that time, because at that time it came totally in the shadow of Rem Koolhaas. Anyway, the NIE uh, so changed into the new uh, Dutch Institute of Architecture, a new Dutch Institute, it's called, Het Nieuwe Institute. And on the occasion of that, they start to refurbish the building of Jo Koenen. And as I said, I think the building can be appreciated today, much more than it was ever in the past. But with all the little interventions they do, one cannot I, one cannot imagine what they're doing with the building. They make cruel interventions in this building. Anyway, it was time for the next intervention, the library, and we were invited into the library. Look at this image. This is the library as we found it at that time. So we were there with the director and the librarian and everyone was saying, well, the library, it's not anymore up to date. Mm, it's outdated, it's out fashioned. Always this terminology came back. Whatever, when we were there, we thought like, what's essentially wrong with this library? Uh, for example, it was totally filled with this nice Swiss USM furniture, you know, this kind of high end shelving and nice uh, tables. And on top, as it was uh, merely almost 30, 40 years old, almost one could say, uh, in, a, in a pretty good condition, honestly. So we looked at it and we look back and I don't have images of that. Maybe I should collect them one more time of the other interventions of the building, totally ruining the building. We thought like, hmm, maybe that could be good enough. Why don't we just reshuffle all the furniture and we change them from the mezzanine downwards, all the shelves for the books and all the tables go to the mezzanine. We open the windows, which were blocked a little bit by the shelving and that becomes the new library. So we, we, we presented as competition entry these two images. Of course, we studied it further on, so we listed up all the pieces of furniture, we made plans out of it, but generally these two images became like the clue of the presentation together with very sketchy, fast made, uh, in uh, um, atmospheres of what it could be and how it could be ahead of the two main images as we made collage from. Actually, I have to say, at the end, this was quite a nasty experience because the director of the NIE, um, on one hand, was not very pleased with the proposal. They paid us money, of course, like you should do in every competition, but they found that we did not really redesign anything. That was an interesting connotation to understand that a 
Dutch uh, Architecture Institute in a time frame of, let us say, four years ago, I would say that the urge of times as we discovered them today were not totally off four years ago. No, we were at that moment yet aware about thinking on reuse and resource and an economy of things and everything. But the Design Institute declared this as not being a design. So in a certain way, at a certain point, even the payment of our remuneration came under stress and we really had to debate why this was also designed. Well, we didn't win, that's clear already. But these first three projects, I believe, are a little bit key, not only from a far past, but also in a todayness uh, on, what, uh, on what we do. That it does not look good makes that it looks good is then, let's say, quite a recent project realized. And what you see here is a pavilion that we realized in the framework of a festival for modern music and art down in a park in Holzbeke uh, called the Horst Park. And so the Horst Festival by that. And uh, we were commissioned to make next to our installation for the uh, for the podia, for the techno music, we were commissioned to make also a pavilion. And then you see a pavilion. <laughs> what pavilion? I mean, what's a pavilion? The pavilion is maybe on one hand uh, the thing of which every architect dreams to be able to build in its life. Because, you know, this is this moment that you can do what could say whatever on one hand, but on the other hand also uh, explicitly uh, show off uh, a new understanding on society, a new understanding on technical challenges or technical opportunities, uh, on, on new political ideas or whatever. The pavilion is in that sense always that, let's say, non-defined program, uh, of, but that defines itself by its total ambition of something in the future. Eventually, at some occasions, also a memorial, but the pavilion is, let's say, the most loose uh, typology one can find and by which architects also do love to design it. And I have to say, if we talk today, Inge and I, we talk today out of the new constellation Architecten Jan de Velder Inge Vink, or opposite way down, Inge Vink Jan de Velder Architecten. And uh, the last years of our previous constellations, more and more things like with the library came to us as saying, well, mm, some change in thinking, some change in action, maybe we would like to see things differently. And I think this one, is also part of that kind of feeling that moved or that led it to the actual constellation of today. And what is this about? Yes, we were facing in a pavilion, but then you looked and we said, ah, what, what will we do? And honestly, there was a kind of annoyment around one could say. So what we actually did was we said, what's a pavilion? It should have a floor, it should have a roof. And of course, one should create distance between floor and roof and then the floor was constituted out of planks that we found around of a previous old chat that had to be demolished, in fact, demolished itself. And we used it as the formwork for the concrete cast. And then also two columns came at place, two columns to keep the distance between earth and heaven, one could say, and the little plate above, well, dimensioned not very well, too thin, not good uh, armature, but by this it started to bend a little bit. And so by that water started to drain away. And the bricks, while well, the bricks, they were just simply stacked. Uh, concrete was poured in from above. So concrete started to drip out and that was this. And then it was there and we went and we looked the moment of the opening and we thought, what have we done? And then an architect Chris, came along and he said, well, 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 someone's trying to give a contribution, a tribute to Mies van der Rohe. And we said, ah, never thought about that. And why? Well, maybe also because of the texture of the cement that comes out and so forth and so on. Then someone else came along and said, uh, demolish, please. We can't keep it. Uh, it, it. This is too ugly to stay. And then someone else from nature came and he said, wow, what a good pavilion. Finally, a building in which insects and little birds can find their home. So diverse options or diverse appreciations, but mostly or positive or negative and nothing in between. And then comes the point is that this pavilion was in the framework of that festival, however, commissioned by the Agency of Nature and Forests. And the Agency of Nature and Forests, which is a federal nature agency, uh, also 
is allowed to give themselves building permits because of course also for such kind of occasion, buildings permits are mandatory. But they made a mistake with the building permits. So as soon as it was realized, a couple of months later, they demolished it again because they, could, they should stay exemplary and they should not give it a try to make their uh, own mistake, let's say, still plausible. So they demolished it. Of course, we all understand that the underlying uh, uh, idea was, of course, that they got so many complaints of people that it should disappear that, in fact, the excuse of the administrative default was just the excuse to let things happen. One year later, the festival was still on and the young guys of the festival, uh, really nice guys said, well, come on, uh, that shouldn't have happened. We want our pavilion back. So they asked us to think about something and we call this the reenactment of the pavilion. And this is what you see. It's a real reenactment. The columns are back. However, they are in this case, even not load bearing because the formwork for the concrete has its, uh, has its uh, building poles. Uh, and on the left side, you see a pallet with sand and one with, sa with uh, cement. Uh, so yes, the concrete we will not pour, but look what happens. It's exactly the same. Well, totally different, but exactly the same. And in a certain way, it also defines a kind of architecture. When the previous one was a comment maybe on even our own tradition of making detailing and architecture, this is rather, I would say, a revealing, relieving moment on what architecture also only can be, a kind like lightness, a kind like temporality. Well, one could say from a certain viewpoint, we are not out of it ourselves, but I think today we tend more and more to say like, possibly this pavilion, this reenactment is even better than the one it is reenacting at a certain time. Um, this is the project Caritas. I think some of you might know it because it has been presented in the Biennale in Venice in 2018. We won the silver line with that. Um, but we bring it here at the table. Jan has been talking about the attitude and the critical way we want to tackle things or we want to look. It's not about tackling, it's about looking at things. Um, and for the Caritas project, we got like, like always a competition brief um, that was about the building that you see here in the middle of the drawing. Um, the building is part of a psychiatric clinic on a big plot that has been built in uh, 1908 by the Sisters of Mercy. And um, you see nice pavilions in a classical way built. Um, during ages, another use of the buildings was asked and was necessary. Um, little by little, the nice old buildings were um, demolished by um, an architect. Um, an architect that always worked together with the Sisters of Mercy. And what you see here in um, red are the nice classical buildings. And in gray, you see like new typologies ground floor based typologies that are arriving instead of the nice old classical buildings. Um, at the moment that we were invited, um, we were invited by the new director who was questioning the idea of um, demolishing these nice old buildings. So we were invited at the moment, they were also demolishing the building we were supposed to work on. Um, but when we looked around at the terrain, you see here arriving pictures we saw a similarity in between, somehow in between the old buildings and the new buildings, in the sense that they all had kind like um, canopies or winter gardens or places that are like protecting people when they're outside, smoking a cigarette, enjoying the sun, talking, um, knowing that it is a psychiatric clinic. It's also like about becoming social again. So before tackling the building, we wanted to do something on the terrain and to reunite again the buildings, the old and the new ones. That's for us at the moment that we arrived, um, it was falling apart. So we proposed to add or to, to deal in a certain way with the old buildings and the new buildings and to make kind of um, canopies, winter gardens, new, places where people could meet and where they could gather. 
um, and we do it with kind of um, a roof and pillars in front or next to each building where people could come together. Um, you see it here on the model, what we are doing and what we are trying to, um, to reach. Um, you see it here again in the perspective. This makes that we also in our building, um, in front of the building, there was a winter garden that we quite liked. We found old pictures of it. And I don't know, no, the old pictures are not included, like you see here, um, the model, um, that we could further deal also with this um, part of the, of the existing winter garden in the project. We didn't, we, the brief asked us to make a kind of, um, a place, a square in a city. And we didn't want to, Jan is <laughs> going over and he's interrupting me. Um, we didn't want to make like a building with a front or a back. So we copied also the winter garden in the back. Um, but the next thing that was important for the competition. So we answered in a more general way. The next step we did was making this kind of model, which is a kind of a puppet model of a very big scale. At the moment we arrived, the roof ties were taken off already. So we had like kind of the somehow the rough structure of the building. Um, but we wanted to play with that model and to be able to make a project that had a kind of a processes, a processes of somehow participation of the people around on the side, but also of the people that would use the building, um, the doctors, the psychiatrics, the director, and things like that. So we made like this huge puppet um, house to present our competition brief. And that's mainly the only thing that we have been handing in. Of course, we have been making also nice drawings of the insights to explain what we have been doing but the model was the key in winning the project because without the model, they would never have expect, uh, understood all those nice drawings. It has to do with imagination. And I think that's an important thing to understand as an architect that imagination, we have it, but for clients often it's hard to understand. Here you see a picture of how we found the building. Um, you see like the demolishing parts were started. They bumped into like, um, with, uh, into a window to enter with the bobcats. And that's where we start to do things in the building. We restore the building in the concrete brick brickwork. Um, we open windows, so that's the uh, building. And I call it a building, but in a matter of fact, it is not a building anymore. It became a square, an open square in the form of a building, but we open it completely so that it is like transversible for everyone. We introduce greenhouses and um, the brickwork again and the, and the renovations we did um, where the bobcats entered the building. But we open the building and we enter or we introduce those greenhouses. The greenhouses we introduce because of a new open um, idea of using the square or the building in a different way. We have been opening also like um, some floors to make connections with above levels, as you see here. Everyone is always asking us like the structure, the green structure, the steel structure was already available in the building. Um, we just have been painting it. So we did not introduce any structural elements except of the, um, gray brick um, stones and um, the concrete stones there where structural reinforcement was needed. We did open also the basement or we took off the, um, the floor plate of the basement as it was in a bad state to create kind of a scenery where they can play theater and things like that. Um, we made like a fireplace um, where people can meet um, and we introduced a tree because a square for us is about trees and we just copied the nice or the nice, the, the lightning of the site just to bring it into the building that you feel that you're outside and that it's part of the bigger side of the whole plot of the psychiatric center. You see here like the fireplace and the looking throughs. Here we are in the basement where you have like the kind of the stage and the fireplace in the back. 
this is like one of the parts where the concrete blocks where we have been knitting the building again, um, where it was structurally um, abused, I would say, because they have been uh, making incisions all over from down to top uh, to introduce at certain moments, electricity lines, sanitary lines and things like that. You see also like the, the copy of the canopy um, of the front parts. Um, the above level where you see also that we have been making clouds to restore um, the window sills where we have been taking out the windows and again we are here with the general perspective what we have been doing this is the booklet of the venice biennale that we have been making at that time with a lot of um, texts of us joseph is a moment it's like kind of a uh, a project where you come at a certain moment where people can gather and all kinds of people have been writing, psychiatrics, users, um, the director has been writing and they write about how they um, perceive the building and how it's made them look in a different way to that old building but also in a different way on how they could use it. And um, you see at the left side here, another building that they had on the site and they didn't know what to do with it exactly. And uh, at a certain moment, they decide to refurbish it by themselves with a very low budget. So by seeing our project, they were inspired to tackle also other buildings on the site. I go a little bit quickly on this, oops. Um, these are drawings. Um, it is like an ongoing process still. You see here like the ground floor level where um, the director is asking us to um, bringing this, the greenhouse that is inside, bringing it outside to have like a little bit more connection with the outside. We also had to do like other things. Maybe the greenhouse on the second level can also be moved as they think the place would be nicer for them. So that's an important thing also to understand that this building is like an ongoing process all the time. And that's an agreement that we have as architects and that's also in our interests. Um, this is like a slide like with um, a numbering of- and Sigmar, maybe... Sigmar Polke. Sigmar Polke with the saying, solutions are the product of a lack of freedom. That's mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. Multiplied by a complacent satisfaction. Uh, it's an interesting point. Uh, look at the numbers, it, it never fits. Huh? So we are learned at schools to one plus one is two. Uh, Polke has a series of works in which he offends that idea. And that goes together with a saying, solutions are the product of a lack of freedom. And, and so we don't make solutions. That's not the vocabulary we want to uh, use it's it's a it's a good we mirror. take we take freedom that's what i think we want to say um this is another project uh, of a competition we won here in ghent um it's it's about like a refurbishment of um the old military bases here in ghent um also in a very eclectic 19th century buildings um a very specific plot um, where we had to introduce office spaces. Um, but as you see on the model, um, the buildings, maybe I go back, um, are very diversified and um, we wanted to make like office space and re reunite it. Um, but we didn't want to do that much. And um, our proposal was um, about making a new entrance level on the second floor or the first level and um, to introduce just like this, um, it's what kind of a shape, this shape like diamond, diamond shape um, to make connect the connections in between the buildings and where the people could meet. The, the, the whole thing about, about this project, if I can go back for one moment, is that the this, this, this was a competition for the office of the province of East Flanders. And in the competition brief was foreseen that half of the buildings needed to be demolished as they are so scattered, scattered around 
they are not connected and the total uh, program was not fitting of course in one building so that commission was in that sense quite clear but um, and it was set as eclectic the building was built with the residues the debris of the old citadel on the other side of the avenue so it it is in fact <laughs> We can say here reuse is not at all a nowadays topic eh? and the eclecticism of architecture is in that sense not strange to it because one has to work with the components found anyway this is another story but to us it it, it was however it was from monumental viewpoint not classified it was still a nice space to be and that's why we introduced here a piece of infrastructure a bridge on the first level and we call the first level the new ground level because then you can walk up one level one up a level down and you are all connected this proposal we won we can go to the drawings i think that also the way we make the drawings this is the entrance hall left to the right you go up and then you come here into the bridge uh, this proposal won it because uh, at the end especially the professionals in the review really were in favor of this project. But one has to say, the director of the province of East Flanders himself was not very amused. And then there came a political situation in which, uh, in which uh, the whole thing turned and uh, they could change the competition and say like, listen, it was foreseen to do it with government money, but now they will realize it with public private participation money. And by that, the whole juridical thing changed and the competition had to be done redone again. You can understand with me, we did not find any developer to work together with us to make this. Developers want to build square meters and so on. So having won it, we lost it with grace, but look, uh, some extra uh, um, um, observations in it. This is the interior of the building where they did not expect that you could make landscape offices in it. And maybe one has to say today, landscapes office are totally non-COVID. Huh? <laughs> they are back out of it. Uh, but you see here also the way we treated the building on the inside based on an observation of all kinds of strangeness. We found it around the whole building. It inspired us to make to this make kind of interiors, which are, let's say, maybe with a blink of the eye towards, uh, towards um, um, um for example you all know better than we wait so we come to the next pro here is some strange things sorry for the inconvenience here we are as you see we 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 here and there let's say connect our way of approaches of thinking of action with one and, and another reference left and the right we feel that uh, it's a reference that somehow let's say frames uh, or let's in which we recognize our attitudes. And this is a sentence of Francis Alice, the Belgian artist, raised architect, living today in Mexico City. And I think he is the one to write this. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry I didn't wrote it myself, but then on the other hand, uh, looking or taking into account his work, what is nice about the sentence is that it brings two words in connection with each other, two words which you obviously normally never connect. Sometimes doing something poetic can become political. Sometimes doing something political can become poetic. We connected to this work, which is a competition we won, uh, I think summer 2015 or 16, I don't know exactly anymore. And which is now under full execution building site. And uh, what you do here, uh, what you see here is a building site photo of uh, the of the um, um, uh, building sites back at the end of the 50s, around 60s, and it's quite a nice uh, image. It's quite a nice image because it faces, it situates really the total context, not only in the context of place but also of time. It is a time of the heavy metal industry all over Europe, making in fact the capital of Europe. We are here on an image. We are in the tower of the Belfort, the town hall in the middle of the city, looking to the old city here. Then you see on the other side, the lower city, or let's say the landscape around with all kinds of artificial terrels that are the residues of mining and metal industry. And what they do as it is a very economical capital, they built themselves an expo space of 66,000 square meters. That's the building in the middle, the building site in the middle. On the left side, on the right side, you have these big holes. I can tell you three stories high, average 
seven and a half meter floor to floor. And in the middle here, you have the construction site of the lobby space, another 12,000 square meters over three levels. And look with me to the beauty of this space as we found it at the competition, huge spans, a strange scheme of colors that no one really historically could situate. It must have happened somewhere in between. Uh, someone was inspired. And here you see images of this central, central lobby space uh, where it, that guides you over the different level. There is still one level below, not open at, this, at these images. And look at the colors, but also the beautiful glazed ceilings. And um, the proposal, as I said, it was over the summer. In a certain way, we were not very, let's say, uh, motivated anymore, end of the year, switch of the year. But then we said, and that's also what happened in the Caritas project or like in the project for the offices, let's do what we really want to do and then um, we don't win. Huh? Then we have done something nice. We can use in lectures as this today, like the NIE uh, Architecture Institute Library. No, that's, that's of course you want to win, but not about winning. And we said like, look at this image. You need to need to know another story. The point is that uh, in 15 or 14 or 16, the Charleroi government got from the European Commission, third community, sorry, uh, 35 million euros to refurbish the building. Well, I can tell you, if you want to do a proper refurbishment of the building, one needs 125, 135 million euros. So clear take, we got only one third of the money to get it done. Uh, the, the mayor and his advisor were, of, by the way, smart people because they understood that this money was never enough for the whole building. So they wrote out a competition saying that from the middle part, the lobby, you one had to make a building of its time saying that it needs to be a zero energy building, not consuming energy, being exemplary in self-organizing uh, energy, one could say. Uh, and then on the other hand, also it should have an architectural face image of the time frame we live in today. And then they ordered also a new parking building under the ground and all this kind of stuff. And we looked to this image and we thought like, well, maybe that's the proposal. Look at this image, an old image, this central uh, lobby space filled with an installation on landscape. That's what we propose. Instead of making a zero energy contemporary architecture building, we propose to strip all the facades and to make a terraced park reconnecting the lost connection between the above and the below city. All the structures are in concrete, could stay freestanding in open air. We even keep this beautiful uh, roof, uh, glazed uh, rooftop, rooftop tiles, and we make a connection. These are the images of the presentation of the model. Once again, you see the Tower of the Bell 4 from which the image was taken, the old photo was taken. And then <clears throat> this was not only, let's say, and maybe not first at all, even an architectural wishing and wanting. It was also a point that we said, this is crazy, 35 million in a central part of the building. And then you keep the other parts of the building full of asbestos technically set, equipped, and so on and so on. So here we said, like, if we do this, we gain money. And it's true, we could save two thirds of the money. Two thirds of the money that we could then to propose to invest in the building around. So technically the asbestos roofs could be replaced and so on. So for us, this was also in fact an attitude an attitude into architecture, like in the characters building and so on. Let's move on. <coughs> I have some images. We have some images of the uh, building site today. And look at this. This is an image of Philippe Dujardin. All images, by the way, are by Philippe Dujardin. <coughs> but uh, it is not a Philippe Dujardin, typically photo collage. It is the reality of the underground of the building. The building has been built on an old terril. So here follows now a set of images of the building site since now half a year and in which we start also to demolish some parts, but in which you can see what a joy of space this can deliver. So uh, on the right side is the upper city and look now here through you see the below city and now we descend already and we start to see <clears throat> the beauty of the openness 
and also how this building eventually or effectively will open itself to the lower city. And on top, <clears throat> these images are of course super nice. On top here, you see the floor we open to the below part. I, you remember the images of five seconds ago of the below part. And on top <clears throat> of it, we uh, have the ability to uh, repair all kinds of things. For example, the floor here above in black uh, has been attacked by a fire a decade ago. It needs to be reinforced. And there comes the story. The reinforcements or the changes we make in the building, like white, white in our tipex on a drawing, we all make in white. And for example, this is now the roof on the reconstruction of one of the halls. So the whole metal is retreated to be protected, fire safe, and so on. But what we don't touch stays in its original color setting. And the white frame comes now above. Uh, in the meantime, the roof is back on it, and it does what it has to do. So we bring a kind of reading of repair throughout the building, as you can see on this image. We collected quickly some new images of our recent, well, it's now one month ago, building site visit, in which you also can see, we make them in black, white, not to offend, to offend, to not offend Philippe Dujardin. Uh, we see here uh, all kind of, now really all facades are gone, all floors are open, and now you can see really from below side, I think the view to the up, what you see here right now is almost 26 meter above your head. It's like a cathedral. Yeah, the scale of a building is a little bit out of human scale, I would say. So um, <clears throat> what's gonna be here? Here come trees, here come park in between, and this is the actual status. But that's it. The interventions we bring, you see, this is the above city and how everything is uh, of, will reconnect itself. The point is that, however, we manage the whole project with 35 million very well. At the same time, the mayor became very enthusiastic and said, well, I'm gonna spend, I'm gonna spend some more money with you. You can repaint the whole building. And there we said, wow, 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 wait, 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 just repainting, this is much more too easy. We started to hoover with ideas and finally we said, well, it's all just about rereading the context as it is. The white is the white, is the correction or is the repair of the whole thing. But maybe the color, new color code is not a new color code, it's that undefined color code that, sleep, that sneaked into the, into the spaces decades ago. And let's just repair also these codes again. So a collaborator of us has been for a couple of weeks hoovering around in the building, really making inventory of, on one hand, the colors that we would like to, let's say, repair. On the other hand, also studying carefully what with the white paint, because, you know, this concrete uh, structure comes now in open air. So we have to protect it with a very specific paint to avoid carbonization. So it's an anti-carbonization paint. Okay. And the most key... <laughs> Sorry, my Siri came in between. I don't know why <laughs> Siri came in between. Uh, and the point is that uh, we made now a study in which we study all the concrete elements carefully, but we not just paint them all white, but with the scientific study of the University of Ghent and Liège, I think it is. We, dis we could detect which parts of the columns need to be protected. So by that, we can develop a language of carefully repainting in which not everything is just bluntly made the same, but the history of painting and also the history of intervention of today, of today will be made present into the building. So what you see on the left side, we will make come true to see uh, on the right side, in the future again. So it's a whole catalog, which is about a careful reading of 66,000 plus 12,000 square meter of concrete structure. And maybe we have to say, as we showed other drawings today, we are always happy and proud to show the nicest documents that go along with it. However, these are documents for the execution phase. So status of today, this was initially like all what's new and changed will be white, but now thanks to the um, intervention of the mayor, it gives us the opportunity to do a total rereading of the building in its original color scheme. And this are preliminary designs in between of how we will 
uh, we will retreat or how we will ensure the outcome of everything. So this is a very abstract one. However, I like to show it because you also feel in these images today, well, that's one of a precise kind already, but like in this one, you can feel actually how the building will look like uh, within two years when everything will be finished. <clears throat> To us also like in Caritas also, in Caritas one could say we delivered three answers, however there was one question and we added two uh, answers like the white uh, center, uh, the white uh, caterpillars that walk through the park as a way of connection or the model that introduced the idea of not delivering a building but starting up a process. Also in this, uh, in this project to us what was important, uh, what was important is the idea of uh, let's say what architecture should stand for today, not only the, re the making of space, not only the making of form, but making of space and form, at the same time understanding uh, how things move on in society, urge, life and so on. What you see here uh, came over the summer, uh, Arkan Reif asked us to present the project. And on the occasion of that, we made a 16 meter long drawing handmade with uh, three collaborators together uh, with Inge. Uh, she directed a drawing that situate here above her head, you can see it, that situate the project into like a section from up the terrell going through the building. Well, this is the enjoyment of drawing through the building. This is the exhibition layout through the building. I move now on here. Sorry, we throw all kinds of slides together. That's not too bad, I have to say, but through the building uh, X and, and then ending up in a vivid city as it will be soon, not only thanks to our project, but through the many projects which are under development. Do we have still time, uh, Artem and, and Leonid? No, sure, of course, you can continue till the morning. <laughs> so we, so we, we still have four hours at one minute. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to run away then because so, I promised uh, to go back to the. But you decide, Jan and Inge, no, when you have no, to stop. No, no. I think I think another twenty minutes would be would be fine. Perfect. Uh, the the yeah, thing is, of I would just make a remark for all the students. So take a chance to uh, ask your question from Inge and Jan. It's a very privileged situation. So if you have any questions or ideas or something what you would like to discuss later, please write in the chat. Uh, sorry for this little, little organizational announcement. Uh, no, no, it's young, okay. Please continue. <laughs> it's 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 welcome in our disorganization presentation. Uh, a little bit organization. <laughs> <laughs> so no, but the thing is that that we 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 like to bring this, especially also in the frame of such studio work as you are organizing, guys. I mean, to explain also that what you see. I mean, often our work is also approached by many. It's so poetic. Okay, thanks. Cool. Yes, of course, poetry is not something which is strange to us, but on the other hand, one has to understand that if you go and have a look soon uh, in a couple of years in this building with all these colors, that these colors are not just an artistic adventure. They are about contextual reading, they are about economy, they are about technical understanding, and we have to preserve the building also maybe for a next future. You never know. We have to pre-use also to 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 make reuse possible in the future, to prepare it for use in the future. And so, I mean, we just want to share this total variety of drives that comes together in the realization of a project. And so uh, recently we were invited in a competition, I have to say, we are still a little bit puzzled by the real reality of the intentions of the, the whole organization. But anyway, it is the competition for the Jewish Museum on the Kiev uh, Babinyar site, which is, one could say, to, to give brief history on it, one of these sites where, let's say, and it's strange to say, the Germans started to experiment with the Holocaust. In this park, which is here uh, visible, uh, this kind of uh, uh, little nut park, there they, are 80,000, 120,000. It's an historical calculation. People lost their lives in the most cruel way, uh, always the cruelest way the, the, the Germans uh, applied, let's say. Um, and then later on came the Russians occupying uh, Kiev, uh, made kind of like of huge bassins 
of economy with water and then the whole site, which was a site of crevasses and little hill, was flooded with mud and, and then later on they just built on social apartments and a psychiatric clinic on it. So crazy, this site is really a moment in history and in this site, that's what I wanted to say, many people have been just buried under the ground, lost all their, their, their last private things and it's all there still in the site present. So to go a little bit quick on this, these are some images to situate it in Kiev. Here you see again Babinyar. And um, there has been a competition a couple of years ago of which the results has been contested as uh, seemingly at that time, a delivered really typical uh, museum or memorial kind like of architecture. And a new bunch of young people uh, started, restarted on the whole site and was organizing or inviting today many offices from around the world to help to rethink the whole idea of what is a concept for a museum. And um, to, to sort out a little bit the context, this is in fact the competition where it's about. It's the old former office of the Jewish Museum, of the Jewish cemetery, in which they uh, project now the program of a kind of memorial museum. And that's how we found it a couple of months uh, on site visits. Strangely, uh, in fact, the, the old building was already under reconstruction, but then it was stopped, hand over to the organization. Well, when we were there, they were still working it on it. Strange, stopped, yeah. it was not stopped. But anyway, so you look to a building that has been attacked already by architects and that needs to be re attacked by architects to make a museum out of it. It's in a, a very short time. In a very short time limit also. The opening is foreseen for September. The second image on the context is that this is the park around. And this park is quite a nice park, maybe especially because there was snow around still. But then look at these images. What you see here are small debris that has been digged up from the former cemetery that has been ruined by uh, the Russians. Uh, and so the whole, the whole site today is in fact, when you start to dig a little bit, you always find pieces, bits and stuff, but also, can I say, uh, actual uh, dirt, uh, people throw it away, it's all in the park. And then on the other side of the park, one has this gigantic psychiatric clinic that has never been finished, that has never been finished, that looks like this today. So never any window was in that building. It has never been used, but today it becomes like the kind like ideal place to squat. A crazy building, even the way it has been built, looked at the strange pre-casted panels with brickwork. You, you, you almost cannot understand how it works. And then some interior images, a building never used, never, but yet under a kind of decay. And this is uh, our proposal. This is our proposal. This is actually an image of the office today. And you see that's a moment of presenting it. This one went live and we had on the wall all the development sketches of the process as we went through. And on the left side, you see here a piece of a model. And what you actually see more precisely is this drawing. It's a drawing in three movements. On the left below side, you see a kind of one viewpoint perspective on that museum because that's the real competition, how to make a museum in that half abandoned, half refurbished building. And then we go in an oblique sense through walk through the park. This is the second park we added to the competition entry. There was not at all a question on thinking about the park, but there's a second part and we explain any minute. And then on the third part above, you see a kind like of complex drawing on that psychiatric clinic as we had also a new idea on that. We wanted to make a proposal in three movements. However, in fact, it was only about the museum. And let's say the outcome of all is, I can say already now, is that we lost the competition on the museum and that we are invited soon, they say within a year, to uh, work on the proposal we made for the psychiatric clinic, I tell you any minute. So these are all images together as we presented. And what is in fact the main uh, the main proposal for the museum we had in our pocket is that we would keep the building in a little bit the status as we found it. Well, some parts of the building we would uh, give a better 
internal climate, other parts we would still keep open, but what was essentially missing in a museum today is or are windows. And here you see on these yellow papers, there are a whole set of ideas of new windows we would or we wanted to install in this museum so that these windows not were just a way of connecting the building to the park, vice versa, but also became places of display, little vitrines in which all kind of objects or things could be projected. And not only, uh, let's say, in a situation of uh, the window opening, the, the free window opening, but also central in the building, we could make some vitrines uh, around. These are drawings uh, Ingemate on that occasion. Again, I want to underline handmade uh, drawings that give really the idea of the process. And we have this folded, folded situation of ground plan and facades to the left, to the right. Actually, we copied the outside facade also to the inside so that also the building would present itself not just as a closed atmosphere, but as an atmosphere of a double kind. The outside facade came to the inside, but also the windows, we wanted to project them in their constellations of vitrines into the park. And yeah, there is an, an, an important thing also to understand the building was built like in three times also, like you see like the main volume with the thick walls, um, yeah, Jan can indicate it. Um, was built like in the 90s, no, 19, 1900s. yeah, 90s, um, 1900s, and then the middle part was added later, and then, in, yeah, in the 50s, and then there's like a new volume with elevator and staircases for fire regulations, we suppose, that they have been adding recently when they were doing like the new building site, so we attacked also the building knowing the history of the building, because history was also part of the brief of the, the Jewish history. So we wanted to play also with the history of the building because that for us made sense in talking about um, the museum. So here you see the model as you saw it before in black and, wow, now it goes wrong. Shouldn't have done that <laughs> because now it's, it's so, enlarging. Uh, why did you do it? Know, sometimes. One moment. And now I go back. No, yes, here we go again. Okay, so uh, all kind of images of the photos with a kind of, we wanted to give them a set of opportunities of windows. We, of course, in a further stage would design more precisely with them. And then you see here, this image, uh, as, I as I said, in which we situate all these different windows. And as you can see, it's much more open in the project of the years of 50s, while here we respected much more the uh, original layout of the building. And you can see it here even once more into detail. Again, the joy of drawing is not only the joy of drawing, but whilst drawing also with our collaborators, it happens that we really can stand still for a longer moment with one or other part. And from there out, we can work really precisely. Into what we didn't win, what we win, we won this story, of course. And what is the story about? First of all, the walk through the park, in which we said like, okay, if we start to, let's say, almost mine all these pieces of good and bad memory, maybe we can start to unite them a little bit in a kind like of uh, cast together parts. And uh, I now refer back to the, that it does not look good, makes that it looks good, the pavilion from the beginning, wherein we experimented in like, thanks to concrete or thanks to a residue, bringing things together. And in this kind, let's say, into all kinds of elements that we would collect throughout the park as elements of memory. Part of the brief was like thinking about the memory of the park and what happened there. So with all the elements that we found in the park, we thought like it would be very beautiful to make those kind of elements as a kind of reference or a kind of memory, memorization of what happened there. So with all the debris, we would build new, um, kind of like statues or elements for use. These are the drawings representing the psychiatric clinic, this empty building. And uh, Inge told me, she said like, yeah, Jan, we lost it. But maybe it also came because when we were at the very moment doing the site visit, we came here at the moment of the psychiatric clinic. And uh, when we arrived there, the first uh, idea we had there together and I is like, we should preserve this building. We, of course, had the memory 
of the Caritas building. Let's make a huge roof on it just to keep it, to, to lock it as it is. But then we're not restoring it anymore. What we do, maybe we organize a summer school every year from let's say May to October. And then that summer school with students, with people from around in the morning, we're gonna clean, we're gonna maintain the building. We're gonna, every year we add something new in the building and we make kind of like a huge summer camp out of it. We provide uh, sanitary, we provide kitchen space. And this becomes really the alternative for the museum on the other side, namely a kind of like of active, dynamic moment in which also young people can be, let's say, taught this tough history at the same time, not just only point being pointed to the history, but rework this history into a kind of new world where history and future thinking comes together. So yes, somehow happy we lost the other competition or the real competition, and seemingly we might be invited in an immediate, in an immediate commission into this project while funding and everything needs to be done. We understand that we are very patient, but let's say maybe for us also the outcome at the end, not in winning the competition, but winning another view on it, especially commenting the idea of museum with this, we are not that unhappy. Maybe to resume a little bit what we have been showing you today, um, uh, we showed you also that booklet and less ever people Inga was talking about on the occasion of the uh, Venice Biennale and the project of Caritas. Ahead of that, we made, a, we call it kind of like of cahiers, uh, like a kind of workbooks. Uh, we had another one and it was called Bravour Scarcity Beauty, which was about craftsmanship in, term, in times of economical scarcity and how we could connect, make things again. And now we're working on a third booklet, which has the name Form Life Urge. And I believe that the project as presented today uh, equally represents the idea. At the end, again, architecture for us is still a matter of life, but we understand that today there is a certain urge in things. And I'm not pointing particularly to this COVID-19 times, I'm particularly to the real wide issue of ecology, environmental, uh, disaster about climate, climatical change and everything. But then we believe that as architects, we are able to sit around the table with all the people who are on the topics, but we can deliver the idea of form. And what is form? Form for us is not by that sense, something like creating totally new things, but pointing to the form of things as they are. And by just maybe giving them another turn of appreciation, another turn of approach, of perception, uh, redefining form in that sense. So for example, like in the park, in Ukraine, in Kiev, resembling all these things and create a new form with it. And together with the title Form Life Urge, this goes together with the words low, uh, low expectations, low uh, investments, or just do it, done, fix it, maybe hesitate leave the things as they are or making it easy. And this, I think, is a couple of slides now who we'll play with his words in different constellations, exactly saying with these words, we hoover around now in a new interest of time uh, today. Form, life, urge. To end up, to wrap up as we started with like some smaller ideas, Things that have nothing to do with each other all of a sudden have something to do with each other. This is one that goes already along with us when we talk about architecture. And this is uh, a summer family photo Inga and I took uh, passing over San Gotardo in Switzerland, not through the tunnel. Since then, we always pass over it. And when you are on the top here, on the left side, actually, you have a nice hotel of Miller Marante. When you're on the top, you know, this is a typical image, blue sky, people around, cycling, tourists, nothing special at the end, but this is the same spot one year ahead. And look for the difference, no people, because the weather conditions are severe. And then often when we are asked, what is then now finally architecture for you? Can you define, can you debate, can you this and that? Then we bring these two images one next to each other and we say, well, well maybe, can we agree that architecture could be something like 
when things that have nothing to do with each other all of a sudden come together and have something to do with each other. And in a certain way, you could say that's already the blood interesting definition of architecture as we have to deal with everything, structure, technique, program and everything. But that's not exactly that what we mean. What we mean is that we are able to stitch things together that have nothing to do with each other. And then finally, you have this kind of, let's say, image, this kind of beauty, because at the end, what does the electricity pile and the horse statue and the traffic sign and the chapel and the little staircase have to do with each other? Nothing. But can we agree that thanks to the, however, severe conditions of humidity, rain and grayness, it all of a sudden appears to us in a different way? Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, I will applaud this by myself. Uh, thank you, uh, Jan. Thank you, Inge. Um, it was very inspiring and very optimistic lecture. And um, in these terms, uh, probably actually, I, I want to ask several questions. And I will ask uh, probably the first one, which I did mean to ask the first, but uh, somehow it cheered me up a lot because uh, he showed several projects and uh, you present like. Yes, we lost this competition, but we won this story. And <laughs> it was a, a very, very <laughs> familiar. <laughs> and as well, uh, in these terms, I would like to ask, what is the most important for you when you start to do your um, project? Oh, sorry, I just realized I, I'm out of the video. What's yeah. the most important for you when you uh, start a new project? What is What are the goals? Because uh, it's in the end probably the approach which all of us should follow, uh, not to win, but to fight for certain values. And uh, what are the values which you fight for in these terms? Well, okay, uh, we can say, and, and maybe I, we don't want to make you scared, Leonita and Artem, as we are now together in a competition, but you could say as a matter of statement, we don't want to win. Huh? <clears throat> so don't be scared, we want to win. And of course, every everyone says we do it to not to win. We in a certain direction, we always want to win. But it's clear that maybe in the way we approach it, um, we approach it in a less deductive way. Uh, because deduction of facts and figures always helps, of course, in getting closer to the direction as it uh, is asked or as it is, it is like expected to be. And however, we work very deductive, and I think you experience that also. We want to understand context really precisely. This is very important. At the same hand, we try to keep hands free to be just imaginary on things. And this imaginary is not only just about being imaginary, uh, but it's because we believe that the imagination delivers us possible other takes on the same deducted material. And uh, that helps us also not only to look to the deduction of things, but to give it also to look to the orbital periphery of these things. And in the orbital periphery are included, of course, I would say many, many nowadays uh, topics. There is a nice work of an artist, uh, uh, Terry Joffrey, he names, I believe, it's a simple tent he placed in a museum and he has written on the tent saying, uh, the contemporary will be replaced by the emergency. So to me, the, these kind of ideas are in our, let's say, uh, play fields in our office, in our mind, I have to say, around. In the periphery come all these things like Francis Alice saying, like this Thierry Joffrey, like all these things we collected and we shared with you today, like Sigma Polka. And this is to us very important to be very much into that contextual understanding of place and time and, and, and people. But on the other hand, also to keep away from it and be, let's say, move into the periphery around it. And this sounds maybe all very theoretical or a little bit, let's say, ambitious to say it like this, but that makes to us that I think we have ourselves quite free feeling when we are approaching uh, topics like competitions and such. And in that sense, I believe, however everyone says, and I think everyone means it also, let's, let's do something, let's, let's make something not to win. That is a very revealing moment. And I do believe that in the last years, even we pick up that line very much more again. While we all know the saying of uh, Bella Bartok, the composer 
saying competitions are for horses. Huh? Uh, and uh, I do believe that this is uh, quite a good mirror. Competitions are for horses. But if the moment you feel that free from it, it, it helps you to really come closer to things. For example, the image, uh, the photo of the building site of Charleroi. Well, on one end, we were closely reading every demand of the competition on zero energy and everything. But then hovering around, looking to that image and seeing the project they're lay, laying in front of you, always for no money and concept for no money. You don't have to think about it. But then you start to, to, to calibrate it on the actual needs of things. Yeah, it's daring to question the things and, and to, to take the things in the right way, I would say. Like, if you know that the money is not enough for doing what they are asking for, then you should re-question us or daring to re-question the brief. And, and that's where we, at some moments, really go for it. Yeah, I think re-question is very, very good and important word, which uh, both uh, describes your practice and as well as so urgent nowadays, because we have to re-question so many things of our branch. Uh, in these terms, um, I would continue with a bit more practical questions. So we have seen many projects with existing structures, how do you work with them? And uh, you work in a very interesting, let's say, re-questionable, uh, inconvenient way. And uh, then my question would be, how, you, how do you define uh, like the values of the structures? What to preserve? What to demolish? Uh, is there any like special approach you have or it's every time completely spontaneous decision? Well, Sorry uh, for asking to open all the cards. Well, it's, I think, quite spontaneous at first. But of course, we also know what we are doing. So it's in that sense, it's also very precise what we are doing. Um, and I still like also question if there is like a lot of um, decisions that happen in sketches and model, or is it just like on the building site? Of course, when we start with the building site, we know already very well what we want to do and where we want to end up. This does not say that we don't dare to take still decisions or new um, turnovers during the building site, but of course, you, know, you need to know your project very well before you can take like new turns on the building side. I think that's a very important thing. Yeah, I think, I think um, it's like uh, playing free jazz. Uh, you can do that improvisations only when you are a very good musician. So it is at any time, uh, please, again, the poetry is made with the last reading sign. If the reading signs are not at place, at a good place, it's not poetry. And that's what makes a poem that difficult uh, to make it. And it's the same with, with this kind of uh, free jazz or not free jazz, the improvisation music. You only can do it when jam. you, when, yeah, you can only jam when you can play music. And this is very important to understand. And it doesn't matter how you learn to play music by, by academy or conservatorium or really by freaking out it on yourself. But there is a relation between the freedom and the knowledge how to survive. And this knowledge is of course, professionalism. So we, we, the, the thing also is uh, like with the Charleroi building is that of course the mayor and, and, and his advisors needed to take a huge turn around juridical approving well, proposal because we were not delivering a zero energy building, but at the end we did deliver a zero energy building, of course. So, I mean, there is, there is always this turn of things with a slight irony. So this freedom on building sites, even in the drawings you make, comes only because of precise knowledge of because of really getting into the topic deeply before you act. Yeah, this sounds very uh, convincing. And uh, in these terms, uh, I would um, I would like to ask you, how then how flexible should you be when you uh, when you uh, like design your project and then when you construct your project? Should you really fight for your initial coherent conceptual vision, or should you constantly change and somehow um, be able to completely? transform your project through That's, construction process, for example. How not to lose the vision of the project uh, through this, like all challenges of the construction? 
that's that's why we don't use the word concept. I, th I think the word concept is as is as as concepts ask to be chased. They ask to be realized. They ask to be confirmed. And there is conceptual thinking and there is concept. Conceptual thinking is more free than concept. Concept is the locked version of a potential of conceptual thinking or a choice of a conceptual thinking. So uh, we're not gonna debate whether we are not conceptual. Everyone is conceptual in its thinking. That's the, the power of thinking to make concepts out of things. But strangely in architecture at a certain moment, the concept became like the immediate lock of itself. Huh? So you're thinking freely, towards a concept and then that's there and then that needs to be realized. And that's almost the opposite to conceptual thinking. If we understand that conceptual thinking is about making links in between things that are at first not obvious, even not wanted, but then deliver new ways of approach. In architecture at a certain moment, we wanted to lock these kind of things. And there to us, it goes wrong. Uh, you have to be able to Think conceptual, but you have to avoid the concept as such, we believe. So there's certain like values or let's say design principles, design principles sounds more technical. So you're more fighting for values rather than for, let's say, dr drawn walls or drawn mm -hmm. concept um, in which you introduced. Are there um, maybe here, I would like to ask one question, which um, I think um, is quite relevant also to the things which we teach in the studio, it's um, but also to the whole practice in general. Uh, once uh, we had the lecture of Brodsky in our school in Geneva, where Jan also has visited, and after he showed uh, his quite uh, beautiful and poetic work, uh, which reused some old elements and some old structures, uh, one very good but uh, quite pragmatic architect asked him, "But why didn't you make a business out of uh, reusing like old windows and old doors?" And uh, for me, it really showed this kind of dichotomy between the more, let's say, pragmatic and environmental, uh, let's say, attitude to the resource of all buildings and, the, let's say, the artistic and poetic, um, uh, let's say, attitude to these old buildings. So for me, I see in your work both, but uh, for me, it would be interesting for, uh, I think, for um, all of us, it would be interesting to understand what is your take on this, uh, Jan and Inge? Uh, how much do you you have lots of projects with old buildings with the existing structures and you very poetically uh, in my opinion uh, work with them but how much of this is a pragmatic attitude to it as a resource and how much of this is a poetic and sentimental attitude to this as a beautiful historical building yeah that's difficult to say huh? uh, again um, um, th this is th the the thing is that when we realize projects, luckily till now, as good as all, I, I think in fact, everyone of the commissioners or clients, whether it's going for a 66,000 square meter building, or for example, today we are working on a small house of 100,000 euros only with a young couple. I don't, I, I think that everyone will confirm and, and, and they did it many times that at the end, we always fulfilled the brief in all its extents, also budget. This is for me or for us very important. The budget is not a limit. The budget helps you to decide or to reveal the real potential of the work. So to us, all what you see is not, uh, what, what we want to, to, but we don't, we are not artists, we are architects. And the architect deals with realities. Budget is one, uh, administration is the other, uh, circumstances one other game. So we work with realities. This is very important to me. And for most people, reality is often um, associated with the, let's say, well, okay, that's reality. You know, you, you reality, you in reality, you can't dream. In reality, you can't change. In reality, you can't be optimistic. And that's, I think, we still have very much. This idea of, of really believing that even in the cracks and the faults and the mistakes and the 
their beauty can be found. And I do think this is a matter of keeping eyes wide open at any time, a matter of, let's say, being prepared on one hand, but also being fresh in the morning when it comes. Uh, so what is the percentage between the one and the other? That's difficult to say. What is more easy to say is how does it happen? It happens because of the moment you try to find, the moment you observe, you're free for the moment. I think it's more about that at that moment, I have to say. I don't know if it's a good answer to your question. Good start to think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, of course, uh, uh, to me is, is um, that this, this is maybe the good sign. We don't have really, uh, really um, uh, the answers to it. I think this is inherent on the way we approach the things. We can answer maybe very precisely on the realistic thing, but much more difficultly when you say, but what's about this poetry? How does it happen? When does it happen? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I will continue. There are some questions from students. So we'll continue with the first and probably the most uh, the students question. Uh, sometimes attitudes and um, uh, architecture gestures you understand being right are not understood by the client or other parts. Those conflict also often happens inside the university. Do you have any story from your students time involving this out of the box way of thinking? Asked by Juani Filinto. I, I think, I think, well, at first I have to admit I was not a brilliant student. Uh, I'm still, I, I don't think that uh, today uh, I would be able to graduate, honestly. I don't know, eh? <laughs> but we graduated at that time anyway. Uh, so I cannot refer, the, the, I think the first project we shown today, which was just after, immediately after graduation, this villa, as we showed in the beginning of today, is there, is there to say like, that's, that's a story of, let's say, misunderstanding totally. I mean, we didn't got the job finally. I mean, in fact, it was quite similar to my student time, constantly misunderstanding. So we didn't got the job uh, at that moment. And um, how to, to bring that back to your idea of studying and debating today, I actually have to say to students today, compared to the times we were educated, it's quite a excellent time to be at schools and to be in debates. Uh, at least that's how we, we experience this. And um, to me also as a teacher, as I now talk as a teacher, um, it is important to, that's what we exactly say when we, we are with students together today. Let's say we are an office and we are all equal. The difference is that I'm a little bit older so that I have a little bit more experience and possibly you are a little bit younger. So you don't have that experience as advantage. And so you have the freedom of acting. And to me there is, is, is in that sense, important is that sense the chance is that uh, today teaching is to me more a horizontal affair, more a horizontal debate than it's about uh, teaching things. I don't believe at this moment, we cannot really teach it anymore architecture. What we can teach as far as it is teaching is that we try to make each other understanding that it's about defining attitudes, about finding attitudes. And these attitudes, my opinion, can only be found by debating the things. So also in organizing classes and organizing studios and organizing subjects to study, we should more evolve to almost together with our students define the topic we're gonna to study instead of just saying we study this topic in that way because the topics today are luckily in a certain way that much difficult to grasp on one hand, but also that much difficult to organize or to manage or uh, to maintain at a certain moment. So to me, 
teaching today. I don't know if it's an answer to the question. I should reread it uh, a little bit more carefully because we have it also here on screen. Uh, um, how to bring that to, to, to the relation into schools between students and, um, and, uh, and schools. I have to say for me, I always thought that university research is about as well the success as well the failure. Uh, so I believe that uh, to me today also including failure as a way of thinking in studio approach is very important because it's when we talk about these failures that we can find the successes and not let's say looking methods to find the successes. Thank you. Uh, I think it's replied the question very well, and it's challenge all the uh, teachers and young teachers <laughs> to um, um, to change some some of the methods of teaching much more complex, but probably much more efficient in a way. Uh, so, Paul, uh, ask you the question. Thank you for, for the wonderful lecture. I was wondering how you sometimes seem to be looking for right cut somewhere between the supports and collapse. When you decide where to cut away from an existing building, uh, how many decisions happen in sketches or on the model and how many ideas just came up directly on the buildings, uh, on the construction side, I believe? I think Inge and I, we, we keep record. Last time it was 473 of the first kind and 729 of the last kind. Is this an answer? No, I, I, think, Paul, I think actually Paul Wright just wrote that his question was just answered. Thank you. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> no, no, it's true. But I mean, it's it's nice that you, uh, Paul, don't so understand. I want to interrupt. We still have to discuss on the okay. it's nine o'clock. Okay, yeah, sorry. I think we can, we can maybe be back with Flora. We can do the last question. Or... Is calling. Sorry. <laughs> okay, but, um... okay. <laughs> <laughs> can I then ask, uh, uh, I have the one of the questions, which was a, as a direct message, um, and I think it's one, quite interesting. So how much of your design uh, in existing building is planned and how much is done or an idea during the building, during the construction site? Is it possible to think everything in advance? Um, so that's kind of problem. No, uh, partially replied today, but probably good summer summary for the uh, today's lecture. No, but it is like uh, when you go for a walk in the mountains, be prepared and be sure that however you will be so prepared, you might need to invent some new attitudes whilst the walk. Yeah, that's uh, that's clear. Um, so we have to be every time flexible and prepared for anything. So at this point, uh, I would like to thank you, Inge and uh, Jan. It was really uh, inspiring lecture. I think we re-questioned and rethink many uh, objectives, and I hope we will continue all together to keep questioning things and keep uh, offering new uh, approaches. Uh, I personally feel very charged and uh, inspired. Thank you very much. Thank you for accepting this invitation. Thank you all the students for uh, joining us tonight. Thank you, everyone. Well, thank you. you. See, we, thank you for the invitation, you. Thank you. <laughs> we return back to our table right now. So uh, to all students, maybe just get back to the table now and work. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good finish of the lecture. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ciao. Good night. Ciao. 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 ciao.